Hello again, everybody. We are here for another screencast lecture. Today's topic is how can I reduce friction? Let's get started. First of all, let's think about some scenarios. You may want to think about a scenario where you want to reduce the amount of friction in, a, in the uh, action, or you might even want to think of a situation where you might want to increase friction. You will have a question like this on the quiz, either increasing the amount of friction or decreasing the amount of friction. What you need to be able to do is to explain in detail what this scenario is, and then you're going to want to explain why you'd want to reduce friction in that situation. For example, you may have a scenario where you have a spacecraft going back uh, down from space down to the uh, Earth going as it travels through the atmosphere, and this is something we talked about in seventh grade. You have the uh, object's going to go through the atmosphere and is going to be traveling at a very high rate of speed as it hits the uh, Earth's atmosphere and all the gases, it's going to cause a tremendous amount of friction. You can see here, without a heat shield, you're going to have the spacecraft burning up. And here's a video clip that you can check out that shows a satellite coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. It's very bright. Nice flashes. Oh, wow. Here's another scenario where you may want to decrease friction. You may be going down a slide, and you want the slide to be as fast as a ride as possible. You're going to want to reduce friction between your body and the slide. So if you think about going on a slide, especially if you're wearing shorts, where your skin is rubbing against the slide, you can have a tremendous amount of friction there, and it will slow you down. So you want to decrease friction to have a very fast uh, and thrilling slide ride. And what are some ways that you can reduce friction? One of the ways you can reduce friction is to add a lubricant. A lubricant is defined as a slippery substance used for lessening sliding friction between objects. Some examples might be, uh, if you've ever surfed, you could use surf wax, and that will add a lubricant between the surfboard and the waves. Uh, another lubricant could be oil or fat, like butter. That could be a very slippery substance. Um, the banana peel like the inside of a banana peel can be quite slippery, that could be a lubricant. Oil, motor oil, vegetable oil, those are, can, any of those can be a form of lubrication, so keep things very, very slick. Here is a video clip showing you what happens if you start your car and run your car engine without oil in it, without lubricant. Let's check it out. Uh, another good lubricant uh, that would reduce friction would be water or ice. Very Obviously, ice is very, very slippery. If you think about ice hockey, uh, the, the uh, Olympic sport, um, what is it called? Where you, with the broom, that's uh, curling, curling. So that would be an example of reducing friction with a lubricant of ice. Here's a video clip showing a, an exciting water slide called the Cobra Water Slide. The water acts as a lubricant as you go down the slide. In class, we'll take a look at a video clip showing you what happens if you go down a water slide without the water in it. Next, lubricants do not have to be a liquid. Lubricants can actually be solid. A very common lubricant that is a solid is graphite, and the graphite's just like you'd find in your pencil lead, and graphite is commonly used as a lubricant, especially in locks, for the uh, make the lock turn easier. That's a common lubri solid lubricant. Another one might be uh, with graphite. If you were a Boy Scout, maybe you did the Pinewood Derby, you would put the lubricant on the wheels and the axle, make the, the wheels spin as fast as possible. Here's a video clip showing Pinewood Derby, in case you're not familiar with Pinewood Derby. Three, two, one.
Another way to reduce friction is to change the type of friction. You could change from sliding friction to from sliding friction to rolling friction. And uh, like for example, in this picture, you can see a conveyor belt with these rollers. The object or the box or the suitcase or whatever may be on here is going to roll very easily because these are on rollers. There's not going to be a lot of sliding. Sliding friction it take, takes a lot more out of an object's motion than rolling friction will. Ball bearings is another great example of rolling friction, and we saw that with the skateboards where the wheels will spin much faster on the axle if there are ball bearings. We also did that uh, lab in class with the marbles, and you should have known that the amount of uh, friction would be much less when you had the marbles between your hands and as you rubbed your hands together. Here's a uh, video clip showing you what happens if you try to run up one of these slides. They do have slides now, like there's one over at Activity Park where the, where the spray ground is where there's a rolling uh, slide with rollers. Let's see what happens if somebody tries to run up the slide. Don't do this at home, kids. Hey, oh, hurry up. Hey, ready, hurry up. No. Run up. Run no, no. <laughs> Another way to reduce friction is to change texture. Some textures that are very high in friction would be anything that has a very, very rough surface and a lot of bumps and ridges, things to catch on. The uh, shag carpeting, for example, that's an example of a surface that has very high coefficient of friction. And if you've ever got a rug burn or maybe when you play, you're playing basketball and you dive for the ball and you can get a floor burn, this is a, a common thing to happen. So when there's a lot of friction between your, the skin and the surface and the, and the floor, you can actually get an abrasion. You can actually, the friction can actually pull your skin off and you can get a rug burn. This is an electro, electron, ah, electron microscope image of sandpaper and this is pretty neat and you can see all the little bumps and little gaps and, and ridges this is going to be very rough surface and you can use that to help sand wood and get as smooth as possible go ahead and take a look at this picture this is another electron microscope picture let's see if we can figure out what it is I will give you the answer in a couple seconds now here comes the answer this is an electron microscope picture of Velcro, and this is pretty neat because you see Velcro, one side of the Velcro has these hooks and the other side of the Velcro has all these strings and the hooks will catch the string and that's what's going to hold things together. I was reading an article about the guy who invented Velcro and he said he got the idea from the uh, burrs, like the, 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 the sticky things that stick to your uh, socks or to your dog's fur, the seeds that, that will attach themselves to you like that. That's where he got the idea on how to design Velcro. Pretty neat. In baseball or soccer or other sports, you're going to want to wear spikes or cleats. These are baseball cleats, and you can see that these are going to increase friction, and you'll be able to make turns much faster and sharper without slipping. Here's a picture for uh, smoothing out the board. When we had a picture of the, the sandpaper before, you're going to smooth the, the board out right here, and as you sand it more and more, you are going to reduce the amount of friction of this board. It's going to be smoother. The sandpaper, you want to have a lot of friction on the sandpaper so it can smooth out the board as quickly as possible. The bottom line is, if you want to reduce friction, you want to make the surface smoother. Another way to reduce friction, this is probably not one that you've really thought much about. Another way to reduce friction is what's called levitation. What you want to do with levitation is you want to make both of the surfaces not touch one another so you can get it to float in different ways. And what you're seeing here, you see a picture of magnet floating on a uh, very cold liquid nitrogen superconductor. And when we're going to take a look at this video clip here, and you can see the magnet is going to rotate fairly easily with just a little bit of touch. And it'll keep spinning for a pretty decent amount of time because it's levitating and there's very, very little friction. And so it can spin for a long time. Even better than ball bearings. Try to Cool. We never saw it flat like that. Yes, we did. Now we did. It's not cool. It's, it's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Never said that. Yeah, pretty neat, huh? Yeah. Now the bottom you see here, now it's freezing. Yeah. You can levitate objects on a cushion of air. You can get objects to float and levitate on a cushion of air. This is a hovercraft over here, and this is neat because it has a cushion of air. There's a whole bunch of fans blowing down, 
and it can ride on this cushion of air over the water surface, so it's not touching the water as much as a regular boat would. And then what's neat about it, though, is when it gets to the beach, it can float on a cushion of air and travel over the sand and the land. This can be a craft that can go on land and also on water. A more common one part of air levitation that you're probably familiar with is when you go to play air hockey, air hockey puck is going to float on a cushion of air. That's levitation much less friction. So if you've ever played air hockey without the air hockey table plugged in, you know that the puck does not move very fast, but with the air hockey plugged in, air, the hockey puck moves much, much faster and with much, much less friction on that cushion of air. Levitation. Hovercraft is seen in this video clip. Let's check it out. This is pretty neat. Another form of levitation is magnetic levitation. This is a what's called a maglev train, which is short for magnetic levitation. And if you know about uh, magnets, if you put like a North Pole magnet next to a North Pole magnet, you can get the magnets to push each other apart, and they can kind of float on each other in, with a uh, cushion of magnetic force. And so they're not physical surfaces are not touching each other. The magnet they'll actually float on top of one another. And so that's what's happening here on this maglev train where the, the train is actually floating on a magnetic field versus rubbing against the tracks. And because of that, you can get these trains to go at extremely high rates of speed. Here's a video of a uh, maglev train in Japan, and this one can travel at over 300 miles an hour. Let's check it out. Okay, before we said there was a scenario where you had to think about how to reduce the amount of friction, well, sometimes you might want to increase the amount of friction. Sometimes there's just not enough friction. I like to think of, like, uh, cartoons where the cartoon carrier character starts to run and it can't get any friction, it can't get, get caught in anything, and it just keeps running and spinning its feet until it finally catches and then runs off, like the road runner here. Um, also, like if you want to, you might want to increase friction when you're trying to make a turn, especially on things like ice. In the winter time, you know that the sometimes the trucks, if they don't have enough salt, they sometimes will dump sand on the roads, and that will help to increase the amount of friction between your car and the icy road. Here's a video clip showing what happens if there's not enough friction when you're ice skating. And away we go, Eel in the outer lane for Germany in the red and black. Chitet in the orange of the Netherlands, and oh, he's down. Chitet is gone. What if there's not enough friction? Well, if you're in a dragster car, sometimes you'll see them at the very, very beginning. The wheels will spin and spin and spin and won't really catch. But And you need to have a certain amount of friction or the car's not going to move. So you need to be able to push off. So without, enough, without friction, you couldn't push off to get started. The wheels would just spin around and around and around. You would never be able to move. And also, if there was not enough friction, you couldn't get enough traction to turn. So... If you are making a turn, friction is required to be able to make that turn if you are in a car where, the, where you're turning your wheels. That's why it's really important when you start driving that when you're on icy, slippery roads that you slow down because when you make turns, that's when a lot of times when cars lose control cause accidents. Here's a video clip of a doggy trying to run on ice. Thanks. 
So the bottom line here is what does friction do? It allows things, be careful to back. Uh, this it allows things to change their motion by pushing off. So friction is a good thing in this case where it allows motion to occur. Without friction, we're not going to be able to have things moving around. Here's a video clip. Let's take a look at this again. This is a, another kid trying to run up one of those rolly, rolling slides. Again, don't do it. Not a good idea. You can get hurt. Well, folks, that's it. Uh, any questions, we'll t talk about a few things in, coming up in class. Leave uh, comments and questions down in the comments section. Be sure to thumbs up if you like it. Be sure to, well, don't thumbs down because that hurts my feelings. Hey, uh, that's my thing. I know. That's why I don't want them to thumb down. Uh, oh, and you can also check out Why Guys Reviews. Check out Why Guys Reviews. Um, and also be sure you subscribe. All right, we'll catch you next time. Toodles. Be careful, kids. Bye.